welcome Mr. Danny Field mm -hmm. to Linear Rock. It's a pleasure for us to have you here and uh, welcome to the Gods of Metal once again. Yeah. You've been here quite often actually at, to this festival. So you're Twice I believe. Yeah. So it's... Uh, it's a very weird lineup today. It's like I suddenly realised that we're kind of slightly out of place on the bill. Yeah. <laughs> what with so. White Snake, Europe, Mr. Big, Duff Claggan, whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that um, maybe mm, the fact that playing uh, in festivals sometimes force you to play earlier, so not with darkness? Uh, well, does this change the atmosphere well, we, a bit for you? Well, of course, it will do. Yeah. Um, but we just we just headlined uh, like one of the stages in Hellfest like two days ago. Yeah. So we played at one o'clock in the morning, and now we're playing at like quarter to four in the afternoon. My body clock's absolutely screwed. I don't know. I don't know if I'm coming or going. To be fair. So that that make no difference for you. No, we'll go out and you know. All right. And uh, play a good gig. I hope. Um, darkly, darkly. Genus Aversa is your latest album, and um, do you think, um, do you agree the fact that it's more heavy, it, the riffs are more heavy like in the early days for Cradle of Field and also more keyboards in it, is this uh, the direction that you're gonna follow from now on? Um, I don't know, uh, it's hard to say, we're about to start writing for our next record over the next, we've got a few more festivals to play and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll start writing the next record and even now uh, we're not quite sure exactly, we, we, you know, because we change things from albums to album, we don't want to be too formulaic yeah. um, and too predictable, so with that in mind I think the new album's going to be slightly different direction from the previous one. Yeah. But we are actually releasing a EP soon. It's got it's it's like a documentary, um, and it's got some remixes on it. Yeah. Uh, but it also has another track that we wrote between uh, Darkly Darkly and and uh, what now really? So um, and that's that's heavier as well. Considering each album as a child, which is the most evil child that you had? Most evil child, <laughs> um, Luna. That's my daughter. <laughs> She's so evil. Um, in respect of, um, I guess, uh, the pain we went through to give birth to that child, yeah. I'd probably say Crossy and the Beast. All right, that one. That, that's your pick. Okay. That's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> you did ask. <laughs> uh, uh, we read about a particular album titled Midnight in the Labyrinth, which is in the work in progress. Can yes, you tell us a bit more about it's it? It's an orchestral album okay. and it's based on our first four records because that's those are the records that we have the rights to re-record. Yeah. But we've done it um, in, in a big symphonic style. So we've taken tracks like Summer Dying Fast, A Gothic Romance, Funeral in Carpathia, um, Thirteen Autumns and a Widow, and, and just replaced it all but like movie film score, so it's it's very evocative, uh, very passionate, very dramatic, very cinematic. Um, it's not. It certainly isn't lounge music or elevator music. It's you know it's very tempestuous. Um, but we've been nibbling away at it. But so it's good. Apparently, it's going to see the light today about January of next year. Um. You contributed to dictate, in a sense, um, the genre, symphonic black metal, since the early days. You're one of the first bands, big bands in that genre. Um, do you ever felt like a slave of your own child, in a sense, during the years, during your career? Um, no, but I, I understand where you're coming from in that respect, because there are things that, are, if, you, if you create something, there's, that you, you learn to have to live with some people's expectations. Yeah. Um, and so in that respect, I, I agree that it, it can be difficult because you have to live up to those expectations. But as with the new album, you know, we're our own bosses and, you know, we, we just want to do something different and hopefully 
still lead the field. Yeah. You know, and other people look, look to us to, to raise the bar. Yeah. Um, we're good at raising bars, actually. <laughs> What can we, can we expect from the show today? Um, some kind of different outfits, maybe because it's daylight or... Uh, uh... Yeah, bin bags. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> Tiny little eye holes that can't see so the sun. So it doesn't matter for you, I mean, you're doing the full show anyways? Yes, yes. Yes, yes we are, yeah. Um, in the past, you took part uh, to the horror movie Cradle of Fear. Yeah. And you also collaborated with Claudio Simonetti, which is Italian, uh, to the soundtrack of The Third Mother of Dario Argento. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your favorite director in movies, um, uh, horror and non? And, oh, um, I, you know what? I couldn't answer that. I just, I, I'm, <laughs> it's like people saying, What's your favorite album? I've got so many favorite right. albums, I just can't you know, put my finger on one thing at all. But yeah, yeah, Italian horror movies are all classic, obviously. Um, but, you know, I just couldn't, but there's so many I couldn't tell you, I really all couldn't. Right. But is there. I'd bore you senseless. Oh. Is there any movie that you consider a cult, something that you, you have to watch if you're into. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, obviously, it's the Star Wars trilogy, goes without saying. Oh. Uh, the, the original trilogy, obviously. Um, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, the Capola one, I, I, I just really like it. It's a, there's a, a, a film um, called uh, Night of the Demon, it's a very old film, 1934 I believe, uh, which is amazing, everybody needs to see it, it's just fantastic. Um, and I really like the uh, Edgar Allan Poe adaptations that Roger Corman did, which are um, Master of the Red Death, uh, Tomb of Ligia, um, Pit and the Pendulum with Vincent Price. All classics. I bet you have a large collection of horror movies at home, is that true? I have a few, yeah. A few? You mean like a hundred, two hundred? Maybe close to about four thousand. <laughs> wow. Yeah, good. Cool. So you have more horror movies than records at home? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. So which are the next plans for Cradle Field at the moment? Um, well, I'm going to go and use the toilet in a minute. All right. <laughs> and That's then number next? one. Okay. Yeah, and I'm going to have something to eat. <laughs> and then I'm going to get ready for the show. Okay. Um, no, the next plans, obviously, we've got to finish uh, our touring schedule, which involves, uh, like, Vacan and Grass Pop on Sunday and a, a, few other, a few other festivals. Then we have this EP thing coming out, which is, yes. like, a document. It's more of a fan thing. It's got, like, an hour-long documentary. It's got remixes on there. Um, it's got that track I told you about called yes. uh, Thank You Lucky Scars. Um, so it's a bit of a collector's thing. Um, I've got a poetry book coming out. I'm also doing a, a band with um, uh, Rob from Anthrax and um, the guy from The Cult and uh, King from Gorgoroth called Temple of the Black Moon. So I'm working on that as well. Uh, Midnight in the Labyrinth thing, the orchestral album coming out in January. Um, yeah, keep them busy. So we see that you're wearing an Iron Maiden t-shirt. Am I? <laughs> is that Killers your favorite album? I mean, no, 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 consider... no. My, fa my favorite Maiden album is Power Slave. All right. And do you consider Iron Maiden the definitive heavy metal band? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Danny Field of okay, Fredo Field. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Cheerio.